Right, so today we are going to set up the Logic Remote with Logic 10.5. Now this is really cool, I've got my iPad Pro here and we can install an app called Logic Remote on this iPad so we can actually control our Logic performance, our Logic project, just with our iPad. So essentially, if you're familiar with Ableton Live, you'll be aware they have that device called the Ableton Push, which allows you to kind of get hands-on with the DAW. But Logic have been very Apple about this, and they allow you to do it with your tablet. So let's set it up. So this is the Logic Remote app. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that your iPad and your iMac or your MacBook are on the exact same Wi-Fi network. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to connect to each other. Now you can do this via USB. If, if you haven't got a Wi-Fi connection, you're maybe down or whatever, you can still use this feature. But I'm going to do it across Wi-Fi because it's super easy to set up. So what you're presented with as soon as you open up the app is this menu here. And it just tells you what devices are available on the network to connect to. So we have Ben's MacBook Pro, which is the one behind me here. And we also have Ben's iMac. Now we're going to connect to my iMac today because that's the one that has got the latest version of Logic 10.5 booted in. And we want to try out the Logic Remote so we can do some live looping with it. So simply, we're just going to connect to Ben's iMac. We're just going to select that in the menu. And then it's just going to attempt to connect to it. Now, on your computer, you'll be presented with this option. So it says Ben's iPad wants to connect to Logic Pro X. Now you have the option to say don't connect or connect. Now, obviously, we want to say connect. So that's what we're going to do. Straight off the bat, we are presented with obviously the mixer. Now, this thing is so intuitive. This is my like first time kind of using the Logic Remote since it first came out years ago. Like I haven't really used it that much, but honestly, you can mix around your faders instantly. You can see how that is instantly responding inside of the software. Likewise, I can do a bit of panning straight away. It's it's performing great. In fact, I might actually start using Logic as my mixing software just to use this as the as the surface to actually control everything because it's just so easy to connect and so accurate. I'm really enjoying that. But you came here to learn about the live looping. So let's let's head on over to the live looping view. So in order to access the live looping view, we actually click this little drop down menu over here and you can see we have all these different workspaces that we can actually explore. Now, let's first take a look at smart controls. Now, smart controls kind of gives you the features that are on this specific track patch. So right now we're on transitions and it's just got a sort of dead basic compressor loaded in and we can just sort of mess around with these sort of really basic compressor and effects that are built in. So, you know, you can see we can adjust the sends over here and we can also mess around with the sort of compressor that is on the patch. But We'll come back to this view just in a moment, but let's head into the live loops area. So as you can see with the live loops, it is identical to what is displaying on my iMac. Everything about it is the same. The colors of the clips are identical. Now the way we can scroll down because obviously there's not as much real estate on my iPad compared to my big iMac. So we'll scroll down. You can see we have all of the clips available to launch. Now it's super intuitive to use. We can literally just click on the clip we want to launch and there we go. We're performing with our Logic Remote. This works exactly like an Ableton Push, but you can just use your iPad that you know, you, you just have lying around the house or whatever that you maybe watch uh, like Amazon Prime on or something. Uh, but you can now use it for your music production as well. So it's got double purpose. But the really, really cool thing is we can actually do some really advanced settings and features on just the iPad alone that you would normally do on the iMac with like a mouse. So first one is loop quantize. So if we take a look at the top right corner, obviously we can adjust the quantize start. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the quantize start, check out this tutorial over here where I sort of gave you an overview of the live looping mode on Logic 10.5. And my kind of first impressions with me being a heavy Ableton Live user, I kind of just shared with you a little bit of some similarities and things and what I actually thought of this update. But inside of this menu, we can adjust the quantize start. So this is essentially how fast the loop is going to start playing from when we click it. Now we can adjust it inside of this menu here, but also on the iPad, we can click this little sort of square and it presents us with 
the quantized start menu. Now, what you'll notice is when I adjust this to four bars, for example, on the iMac, it instantly adjusts it on the iPad to four bars as well. And likewise, if I switch it back to one, it changes straight away inside of Logic on the computer. Now, what I actually want to do is I want to add an instrument and show you what we can also do with the iPad when it comes to performing, because not only can we launch our clips like this and uh, perform with the iPad and get really hands-on with the live loop performance, but we can also play instruments with the iPad. So let me demonstrate this. By the way, if you're getting any value from today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing because I do three videos just like this every single week. So if you don't want to miss any of those, also turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss them when I upload them. But let's continue on with the video. So what we want to do is I want to add just the dead basic piano sound. Now we have two ways we could do this. We could go to the little libraries icon over here and start diving in on some special sounds, but I'm just going to load in a default patch. So we'll just scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can see we have this plus arrow here. So we can click on this and it says add audio, software or drummer. So we're just going to add a software instrument for today's example. And you can see it just loads in the default patch that it normally does on Logic, which is just the classic electric piano. Now where it gets really cool here with the Logic Remote is we can actually play this piano with the iPad. Now you can see, obviously I can record this piano as well. So for example, if I had an actual MIDI keyboard on me, I could play it on the MIDI keyboard and click record on my iPad. So it almost acts as your loop pedal, your actual iPad. You know, if you're used to using the Boss RC 505, Boss RC 300, which we talk about a lot here on the channel, you can kind of turn your iPad into one of those with this Logic remote. But if you want to actually use the iPad to play some instruments, like I haven't got a MIDI controller on me today, so we're actually just going to use an iPad. So what we're going to do is we're going to change workspaces and we're going to head on back to the smart controls. Now, as you can see, the smart controls look slightly different to last time. Last time it gave us the options for them sort of compresses and their send and return tracks on that specific audio track we were taking a look at. But this time we are presented with the keyboard. Now I can actually play this keyboard like your normal MIDI keyboard, but with the iPad. And to be fair, it's pretty responsive um, it, and it's quite comfortable to actually use. We can adjust how big the keys are down here. If you know you want some wider keys, smaller keys, normal size keys, whatever. Most importantly, Logic have provided us with the little record buttons because you know it wouldn't be much use if we could play the keyboard, but then we couldn't record the clips. So now we can actually play the chords while looping the clips. So let's head on back to the live looping zone and let's just launch scene one over here. Now I think this piece is in F minor, something like that, I don't know. I was playing around with it earlier, but let's hope we get some right notes. And then we can loop this, so check this out. I'll do something dead simple. Record. You can see we just recorded something dead basic, nothing, nothing revolutionary, but we did it with our iPad just by clicking record, playing it on the iPad, and then double tapping the cell to initiate playback. Now, if you make a mistake, you can click this little sort of edit button here, and then you can see the cell sort of turns to a dark green. Now we can actually click on this cell, and we kind of present it with the right click options that you would have inside of Logic. So if I went down to Logic and I right clicked on a cell, you can see we have pretty much similar options to what we have on the iPad here. We've got playback, edit, etc. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to delete this. So we can click delete. And now we have removed that cell uh, if we would made any mistakes and we needed to re-record it. Now what I wanted to demonstrate with this overview of the Logic Remote is how it makes your performance so much more enjoyable and intuitive. Gone are the days of you know grabbing your mouse and sitting around and clicking, launching clips, and then doing this, diving into these menus here. We can actually just grab our iPad, start adjusting parameters inside of the software, and it takes these virtual instruments and it makes them physical in some form of a sense. You know, we can turn the dials up and down like you would on a real instrument that you would have 
at your fingertips. You can record, playback, stop loops just by clicking the actual cell you want to record into instead of being disrupted by grabbing the mouse and dragging it over to the cell and clicking record. So if you want to learn more about the Logic 10.5 update, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel because we're definitely going to be covering this topic further in the future. So if you don't want to miss those videos, be sure to turn that notification bell to on as well. But if you've got any questions about Logic, let me know in the comment section down below and I will try my best to maybe make a video to answer them. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.